Okay, this is a, um, a slide presentation that I uh, developed for the uh, first year seminar. Uh, the intention here was to cover undergraduate research and although it's uh, both generic, this particular one has a, a specific focus on the uh, honors thesis and, and understanding uh, what the expectations are and so forth as well as selecting one as well. And so uh, I have used this actually recently for the specific uh, course that is the, the honors freshman seminar. Um, the dis I just noted this and, and these are the questions that I, I hope to answer in this and if I don't manage to answer them for you then you can certainly uh, look me up and I can uh, clarify that. Uh, the first big question is, is what, what can you do for undergraduate research? Uh, the second one here is the uh, uh, what expectations would be for you for conducting undergraduate research. Uh, the flip side of that is what expectations might you have for uh, of others in doing that. Uh, of course one of the things that people are always concerned about is how much time uh, do they, does it require uh, and then what is the value of that to you as a, uh, uh, when you finish your degree. Um, there's some other things that I'm going to cover briefly, and that is can you get paid for undergraduate research, and I'll talk about this in a more general context, not necessarily just conducting uh, your honors thesis here at Penn State. Uh, what accredited or course substitutions, uh, I'll, I'll have some comments there, but this does change, uh, and so that's something that you're going to want to talk to as well with your, your honors advisor. Um, the next slide here, I, I broke this down into uh, a, a, a basic idea of satisfying the requirements. There are many of you that may have other uh, things that you are doing in school, and, uh, and so maybe the honors thesis isn't, uh, you know, if you're in blue band, in, in varsity sports and so forth, there have been honors students that have done that. And then I have on the flip side of this, what we would prefer as faculty, is that you would be an actual overachiever. And so I break it down in the next slide here, just some characteristics of these two categories. Uh, that I've seen over the years um, and uh, from that context uh, there is a nice little video on, on online here that tells you how wonderful uh, the honors thesis is and I, I do agree with that I think that it can uh, be really one of the highlights of your undergraduate education and uh, since faculty this is their, their individual passion I think that you can realize that this is an opportunity to tap into those passions and, and, and get a lot out of a opportunity uh, like this. Uh, with that in mind, I think you also have to have a bit of a reality check in terms of, real, uh, of what exactly research is like. Uh, no matter how interesting a project is, there is going to be typically some, some, some tedium uh, associated with that. Um, and that's, that's normal. And, and I think that you, knowing that up front is, is uh, important. Uh, finding time is hard. Chemie is not a simple, easy major. Uh, in particular, it can be quite tough in your, in your junior and senior year, uh, senior year in particular. And so it's really important to get started early. And I'll try to reiterate that throughout. In fact, I'd encourage you to try to get involved, certainly by your freshman and sophomore if you can, and absolutely have it started by the beginning of your, of your junior year. Um, and uh, realize that because of the requirements, there's going to be some aspect of having to sacrifice uh, your, uh, for that purpose. Um, so uh, it is reality that many honor students don't necessarily go to, to graduate school. Uh, many do, uh, and so it may, may not actually be something that you like a whole lot. That's one thing that you can learn uh, from this experience, and the diversity of what's available to do research can allow you to choose uh, uh, something that, that matches your you know, preferences, personality, etc. Um, so looking here now at the characteristics, I, I put them up here. They're, they, they, they're the extremes. Keep that in mind. In fact, some uh, are, are quite uh, marginal in that, and, and then some are uh, the overachievers, if you will. So uh, not starting your thesis to your senior year could be a, uh, a disaster. Um, uh, some have actually started it before they actually had their first class here on campus in uh, their, their freshman year. 
Uh, I've had a scene where the, uh, the thesis has been handed uh, to the uh, reader, secondary reader, right before graduation. It's supposed to be a minimum of, of several weeks to a month. Uh, that's obviously not advised and can be a problem. Uh, others have actually stayed, uh, and you can stay without paying tuition during uh, your post-graduation. You can walk in, in your spring semester, for example, and some have opted to actually then finish and polish it up before they head on uh, to graduate school, for example. Um, written up a year before graduation, I've seen that, and it's, you know, it's reasonable uh, if you are, have done enough. Uh, but with that in mind, that's not necessarily. I've seen it less than 20 pages in length, and I've seen it a bit more than 150 pages in length for an undergraduate thesis. Um, I've seen some that I, I'm quite certain did not take any more than uh, 500 hours of effort or so, and probably those that took more than 5,000 hours over a four to five year period, including multiple full-time summers as well. Um, I've seen some, the, the writing was incredibly poor, uh, and I'm, I'm mentioning this because I'm going to be showing you later one of the ways to get an idea about what this is about, is, is to actually go through some undergraduate theses, and there's an incredible diversity there. Uh, on the other hand, there are those that have resulted in being first author in major journals, patent co-authors as well. Uh, finally, I've seen as poor that even the advisor was embarrassed by the work that was done. Uh, to exceptional full-ride graduate fellowships to essentially any uh, university for a PhD, as well as working uh, for uh, major corporations in the job of their dreams. Uh, and numerous have actually become faculty members in chemical engineering after having done their thesis here. Uh, I think that uh, there, it's probably important to re re um, note that there are those who have cut it too close and did not graduate with honors as a result, because it is an absolute requirement uh, to generate a thesis. Um, the next one here, I wanted to emphasize that you do, you do have to do a thesis, or you do not have to do a thesis in chemical engineering. However, you have to realize that you will graduate with honors in the department in which you have done the degree. And so, for example, here, I just give this as an example, you can, in principle, insert any PSU major that you would like to. You could graduate in chemical engineering with honors in, in any other department. Uh, there's a lot who would pr obviously prefer to have it uh, graduate with honors in, in, in chemical engineering. Uh, and so I want you to understand that that's the case. So even if all of your honors option and all of your coursework is in chemi, the thesis ultimately defines what sits on your diploma as that degree. Uh, Chemi has a large number of affiliate faculty members that they have uh, added in, in the last uh, few years. And any of these can, uh, they have academic homes in, in many different departments. Um, and you, should, you can have them as a thesis advisor and there's no special considerations then for graduating with honors in Chemi. It does make our, our web page a little bit uh, difficult to interpret since there's at least uh, a third to almost half of the faculty there don't really teach in our core chemical engineering courses, so you're not going to meet them uh, through class. It'll only be by looking at those topics. Um, you might be able to, we've done this in the past, arrange a ghost advisor, so to speak. Uh, say you're working with a faculty member in food science who has a chemi background, the work is largely chemi. Um, and in the process of that, you could actually graduate with honors in chemical engineering by having an arrangement where there would be a reader uh, or a primary advisor in chemi for the purpose of the grading and so forth that would work uh, and coordinate that with your, your, your uh, advisor in, a, in another department. Uh, and we have faculty with joint appointments uh, in many different majors. I have them in three different uh, departments. Uh, so the obvious ones would be chemistry, biology, molecular cell biology, um, but some are, are not so obvious in food science, horticulture, etc. And so um, the main point I'm going to make here is, is that if you have an interest, uh, why don't you start with that as your uh, core uh, point to, to figure out where you, you would go and then some of these logistical details can be, can be worked out and that was the intention of the honors program to provide that. Um, so your honors advisor and your 
thesis advisors don't need to be the same. In fact, it's actually an advantage maybe if they're not, you have another person to uh, obviously get a recommendation from. Uh, the thesis advisor is the person that you work with uh, on the physical thesis itself. Your honors advisor is typically the one who was appointed to you in your freshman year or whenever you entered the program. Um, so, that being said, I, I'm trying to go to the next one. Um, so the basic questions that I said that I wanted to answer, I'm going to try to go through them piece by piece. Uh, the question of what you can do uh, is, I, I would say, uh, reasonably liberally, that it's just about anything because we purposely hire in chemical engineering a diversity of backgrounds that cover the breadth uh, at here at, at Penn State. Um, with the caveat underneath it there that this has to be a faculty member with, who's willing to to super that buys that uh, with you. Um, just throw out some examples here, you know, th that uh, there's some membrane here, there's a lot of work in material science, uh, some work here in solar cells, and I wanted to emphasize that if you really want to get into research at some point, if you can find the time, I would highly advise that you see if that you can arrange to do that research full time in the summer. Uh, there is a tremendous difference between trying to work in undergraduate research in the hours uh, between the demanding coursework that you're doing and the actual full-time execution of research without the distraction. And there are some fellowships I'll be mentioning at the end and certainly very early on before you're actually qualified to take internships and so forth is a particularly good time to potentially get deep into the, uh, the research content. Um, another thing I wanted to emphasize is research uh, often has this perception of being uh, lab coats and, and wet bench and so forth. Uh, a lot of research, uh, a significant fraction, uh, a quarter or more of our faculty, the research is actually done on uh, computer-based work. And so simulations and so forth have obviously come a long time. This image on the left here uh, was actually some images from the facility of biomolecular uh, simulations when I uh, started here. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, I suppose. Uh, and things have really come a long time. So just keep in mind that if you, uh, that, that the option of doing research that is not, uh, what I would refer to as wet bench uh, type uh, laboratory chemistry, uh, is definitely something that is an option in, in chemi. Um, and in fact, uh, this is just another example that uh, remember that re research in doesn't can, it involves the development of, of ideas and hypotheses. Uh, this is just an example of a student whose thesis was actually uh, doing a literature review type summary in the library. Uh, it was perfectly matched for what he wanted to, uh, to do uh, in an area of large scale. Uh, biological oxidation and so he actually did a literature review on that topic and so uh, keep that in mind that different things can uh, potentially be arranged particularly if you have a, a very well-defined uh, personal interest or professional interest. Um, what distinguishes an honors thesis from other grad undergraduate research because a large number of students will in fact uh, do undergraduate research um, is that you have to write a thesis. And so there's a formalized requirement of a write-up, and that write-up has to be handed in roughly a month before you graduate, right in the middle, typically, of, of senior design and, and so forth. And uh, so, um, to me, one of the best things that you can do to get an idea of this is you can literally go to the uh, website that I've listed here, and it provides links to the theses that have recently been uh, 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 completed. Uh, now, there will be some that are not there. There's some caveat that you need to understand there that if it, per, for instance, uh, has proprietary information that they're working on a patent, it is possible that it will not be on this site. So you can't use this as the end all piece of information. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a relatively useful link that will give listings and it's somewhat searchable, it's not terribly friendly, but uh, it will give you an idea of the recent theses, the actual document, physical document itself is linked on the, on the site there. Uh, there are a lot more uh, than are here, this is only in the last uh, a year, couple years, 
Uh, there are many others that are in the library system and they can be searchable as well. And many faculty actually have the theses on their websites and I'll, I'll be mentioning that in a minute. Um, so uh, a couple of things that's a little confusing about the specific site is, is that it does actually um, list your honors advisor on there as part of the committee, which of course their honors advisor may not even read the thesis for that matter as a secondary reader. And so you have to be a, a little attention to it, but if you combine this by looking at the web page, uh, it's pretty easy to figure out who uh, the actual thesis advisor was uh, in the uh, technical content of the thesis. So um, expectation for a junior senior year would be six credits, six credits of 400 level can meet. A uh, minimum of at least 10 hours a week would be a three credit class. And some of the expectations for that would be uh, almost double that. It depends on, an, on a case by case basis, the type of work that's going on and how the duration of the period over which you've been working, uh, whether or not you've been working a year or so before that, all factor into this. And I think it's a recurring thing that I want you to understand is that the thesis requirements and expectations and that are largely uh, dependent on who it is you work with as your actual uh, thesis advisor. And so that becomes one of the things that, in fact, you can get an idea that even uh, by starting early, working around the lab, talking with students um, about uh, projects at that level. Uh, those classes then can be used in terms of chemi technical electives, 400 level at least one. There are some situations like the recent changing of uh, requirements from chemi 360 where there's some flexibility also of using additional credits for chemi as well as for professional electives and of course if you work with your honors advisor, they can help you uh, to work out some of the details there. Um, uh, go to the FESCI webpage. If you don't have this time, but I'll probably, in, in normally in the freshman honors sem seminar, I'll literally go through the, the webpage sort of and, and give you an idea then of all of the different people that you can tend to work with. Uh, these are some of the, what I would call some of the core teaching faculty. And then, as I had mentioned before, there's a lot of other affiliate faculty which you can work with, but they're not physically in our department, nor do they actually teach there. So you would have to take some initiative uh, to actually work with them in the, in the future. Um, I have a few other things here. Uh, these are additional undergraduate research questions. Um, the expectations of you, uh, they're broken down by how much time, uh, when and where. And I think, again, you have to understand that this is all dependent on the actual project that you're, you're going to be working with. How much time, again, from a credit perspective, uh, you're going to see at least 10 hours a week when you're taking three credits at 494, if not more. Um, and that time may also include, if you, if you had the opportunity to work in summers or had been there for uh, a freshman time frame as well. Uh, similarly, the when may depend on the content. If you're going to work on something that requires advanced course material, uh, then your actual thesis content probably can't start until after you would take that material. However, there is a tendency for research to be more science oriented, and as a result of that, uh, it doesn't necessarily build on a undergraduate requirement or that one can learn that on the fly as you are, are getting involved in that. Uh, and the when and the where also, did it work nights, weekends, and so forth, depends on the level of independence, whether you need to work in a wet lab, what safety considerations, and things like that as well. Uh, where, it also depends on whether or not it's a wet lab, if it's computational, obviously you can do that from uh, essentially anywhere. I um, searched around a little bit to try to find a couple of lab research page specific that mention undergraduate research. And I just provided them here. This isn't a, 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 a comprehensive list by any means, uh, but it encourages you to go to their website and you'll always find a link that talks about the research topics. Uh, and those are the projects in which you would get involved with. And sometimes there's some specific links that actually discuss how undergraduates uh, interface to that research in, in the lab as well. Uh, what expectation can you have of others? Uh, that's one thing is, is that you have to understand that there's someone can't work with you every hour of the day. You can't expect necessarily a faculty member to be uh, holding your hand. 
uh, 10 hours a week. And so uh, it's not an atypical that, that you would work, uh, for example, with a, uh, uh, a, a graduate student or, or a postdoc uh, on an initial day-to-day -day basis, and you may actually become uh, quite independent at some stage in the execution of that work. Uh, and in some points, in many cases, if you've been around the lab for two to three years, uh, students often find themselves in the reverse situation where they're actually now teaching a new graduate student who would be coming into the lab. And so there's some reciprocation there. Uh, and obviously learning or teaching somebody something is, is a great way uh, to reinforce and to actually learn as well. Um, what's the value of undergraduate research? Uh, uh, of course, just simply being in the honors program and graduating with honors has a, uh, a very positive uh, reflection. And so there's an expectation uh, that you will have done additional work and so forth. Uh, what is the value of that depends a little bit on what you intend to do. Uh, for example, if you plan to go to graduate school, then it's an absolutely critical component of your application for graduate schools and your recommendations. Uh, if you're going into industry, it wouldn't necessarily have that great an impact. Uh, it can also be that you would learn, for instance, that the work that you're doing is something that you really do not like. You might really not like computational, you really might not like wet chemistry, and, and it's a, there's a tremendous value to knowing what you do not like uh, at this stage of your, of your career. And I throw out one additional thing, and I always tell students that a, if you do an exceptional uh, job with undergraduate research, it can have an impact that would be almost on par with about a half a grade point. Uh, in terms of recommendations for uh, grad school. And that's a huge number if you think about how hard it would be to change your grade point from a 3.2 to a 3.7 or something like that. Um, and yet, you know, that of course can be the flip side. If you don't uh, take advantage of that, uh, then, uh, or you do poorly, it can uh, have an adverse uh, impact on uh, getting into grad school, for example. Um, I have a few, I just threw this one out here uh, because I, uh, you know, wanted to emphasize, you know, that uh, these types of experiences that you have can dramatically affect you. This is uh, two graduates or undergraduates uh, who their honor theses resulted in them. Uh, they actually worked on uh, uh, mechanical breakup uh, mechanisms for uh, red blood cells. And uh, the two first authors here uh, were actually then, uh, are now both medical doctors. In fact, one is a uh, cardiovascular surgeon at Wash General in St. Louis. And so uh, it can actually, uh, again, if you, if, if you manage to hit it right and have the thesis fall into that category of something that you really are passionate about, uh, it can have uh, quite impact. In fact, this paper was uh, published uh, many years after the students had finished at the advice of one of the colleagues that had read his thesis uh, as a result. I have a few others. Can I get paid for undergraduate research? Of course, some students start uh, in, in undergraduate research as work study. Um, if you qualify for that, I'd highly recommend rather than shelving books in the library, you might actually get involved in undergraduate research. There's a lot of RU programs, including RU programs at Penn State. Uh, typically, a Penn State program will have a rider of numerous students who will be funded uh, by other means or that in direct association with that, so it's a good thing to look up. Uh, the link I give here, the National Science Foundation, those, that's the re RU stands for Research Experience for Undergrads. Uh, that link has a searchable engine for all currently funded National Science Foundation programs, and there are hundreds and hundreds of them all across the United States, and some even have uh, international components as well. Um, there's a link here to a, a recent RU program as well in chemical engineering. Uh, that also is something that you can check out. Uh, our department's been fortunate enough to have an endowment from a, a faculty member, that, or, or a former faculty member, who then provided, uh, I'm sorry, this, this was not a former faculty member, it was actually who endowed the, 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 the department. And, and designated some of those uh, funds should be used for supporting undergraduate research. We typically use them for full-time uh, scholarships. I think it's now $6,000 uh, for support uh, for the summer, full-time. And that's a phenomenal 
opportunity to actually not only get undergraduate research but potentially be paid. If you're paid, of course, that does not then provide for the credit you need, but you can kind of imagine that it provides a fantastic um, amount of experience that uh, augments the quality of your thesis by having that, that full-time experience. And even if you go to do research at a different RU program at another university, uh, the experience that you gain there invariably will reflect positively on the ability to do research here at Penn State on your, your, on your thesis. Uh, there's numerous of them. This is one we had in energy, and this, is, this was a tour of the uh, old pilot plant on the roof there. Uh, this is before the chemical, the recent conversion from uh, natural gas to coal, or coal to natural gas. Um, I had course credit, if you, I had actually years ago created um, to try to promote undergraduate research at the freshman and sophomore level, uh, Chemi 294. Uh, it doesn't, in principle, uh, satisfy the six credits for the 400 level chemical engineering that you need to do, uh, but that is something that will show up on your resume, it, sh it allows you to be able to discuss, and in some cases we actually, I always advise that you can do substitutions, for instance, for engineering, design, and graphics uh, with uh, freshman or sophomore level undergraduate research. Uh, Chemi 494H is the credit for uh, typical thesis work. If you get extremely involved in research, and there, there are some opportunities that have historically been taken advantage of to take additional research under graduate level, which also counts for honors credit. Um, and one can then follow that up with going to national meetings, giving presentations, participating in national undergraduate research competitions, and the actual writing of papers, uh, if done in a very systematic way, it can actually then, for instance, be utilized for technical writing. That has actually been done in the past too, although to do that does require a considerable work, uh, effort on your part to actually undertake a systematic uh, learning uh, and, and not just simply assisting with writing. I wanted to uh, end this presentation with a sort of final thought on the undergraduate uh, research experience, the thesis in particular, and I have a couple of images here to, to really convey to, to what I feel is an, an opportunity to uh, really leverage the undergraduate on our thesis to have colleagues that you'll have, as well as friends that you'll likely to have for life. Uh, I was actually just on a video conference call uh, with a graduate student here, over here that was a mentor of Sydney's in the pink and the upfront. Uh, the character on the, uh, on the left there happens to be my son who did his thesis as well. Uh, more recently, this was actually a trip, that was actually Longwood Gardens. We were actually, uh, as part of the research, we were visiting uh, DuPont to learn some techniques they had arranged uh, for us to see some genetic uh, engineering work they were doing and gave us free tickets to check out the uh, Longwood Gardens. Um, in this panel here, uh, this was actually a collaborator in some research that we were doing uh, with the guy at the University of Kentucky and as part of that we actually went on a camping trip on the way there. Uh, the gentleman that's in the, in the back, a little hard to see there, uh, he actually uh, met me uh, last year uh, at the Delhi airport in India and, uh, and uh, as part of sort of a, a treated me then to a trip down to, to check out the uh, Taj Mahal. So it really is something that uh, can go way beyond just the uh, idea behind it being a, a requirement for your honors degree. It really is a chance uh, to meet people on a different level uh, and, and understand really what, the, what research uh, really is all about. Thanks.